Okay. So my name is Wendy Suzuki, and I just want to say that it's both both a real pleasure and an honor to be here to help celebrate all of the wonderful contributions of um, James Ronk to this field that we all love. And um, I'm definitely of the camp of uh, providing um, kind of cool things that the hippocampus does beyond place and, and um, um, kind of head direction. And um, I want to focus on uh, very new data. We've never, uh, um, I've never talked about this before, about how the hippocampus, and here I'm going to be talking about non-human primate hippocampus, contributes to um, learning from errors. So if you uh, PubMed or if you Google error-based learning, what you'll learn is that we've, we've studied this a lot in humans. Learning from errors is a really, really good way to learn, and you'll hear lots or you'll find lots of studies on the role of the medial prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate cortex on detecting these errors that contribute to this ability to learn based on errors. You'll also uh, read a lot about the role of the striatum in error-based learning. But it's learning. And so you might ask, well, maybe the hippocampus plays a role. And we can go back to uh, this classic paper that so many people have gone back to to find, um, uh, to find evidence that back in 1973, um, Jim had noticed things that, that, that um, um, predict this, uh, uh, this, these later findings and the findings that I'm going to be presenting today. And in particular, I'll highlight um, the approach consummate um, um, uh, mismatch, mismatch cells that have this idea of an error detection. What's going on there? Well, later, um, the idea of the role of the hippocampus in error-based learning was um, was made more formal in the form of computational models, first by Lorenz and Bujaki, and then more recently by Ketz and O'Reilly. And particularly, the Lorenz and Bujaki paper is really useful because it has very specific predictions about what they thought these areas might be, uh, what might be doing during error-based learning, although there wasn't a lot of physiological evidence for it. So what are the predictions? The predictions were, one, the enteronal cortex was the key area for detecting errors, two, Enteronal cortex induces synaptic modification in the hippocampus. And then three, the hippocampus, once this, this you know, learning from errors happens, uh, the hippocampus then entrains long-term memory signals in the enteronal cortex. Well, my uh, postdoc, Shipi Ku, got very interested in these specific predictions as she was um, uh, doing a kind of side uh, analysis project on her data and some of the previous data gathered in the lab by Dr. Eric Hargraves and Dr. Sylvia Worth. And she was using, she was analyzing um, kind of the classic experiment um, that we've done in the lab uh, for a long time, the first uh, kind of task that we focused the lab on. And this is an associative new learning task. We call it a location scene association task. And in this task, animals first, these are monkeys again, first fixate a central fixation spot right here. Then we show them a, a complex image and superimposed on that image right here are four targets. You can see north, south, east, and west. They have to maintain fixation um, and then the picture disappears. The targets remain on the screen for 700 milliseconds and then um, the cue for the animal to move his eyes and choose one of the targets is uh, the disappearance of that fixation spot right there. And when that disappears, that's his cue to move, move to a particular target. He doesn't know which target is correct. So this is a, a trial and error learning situation dependent on the hippocampus and medial temporal lobe. And uh, we, we know a lot about what, what um, uh, cells in the hippocampus and the enteronal cortex is doing. This is to remind you we're now moving to non-human primate. This is a ventral view of a uh, uh, primate brain where you can see uh, in white is the location of the hippocampus just deep to the parahippocampal cortex there. And all the data that I'll be telling you about um, are from uh, the hippocampus here as well as from the enteronal cortex. Well, we also know, because we've been studying this task for such a long time, we know a lot about the behavior of this task. So this is um, an example of a behavioral learning curve of an animal learning one brand new scene. Let's say it's that gorilla scene that we looked at. Um, on the x-axis are the number of trials that they got, um, that they completed. The red dots up here indicate whether that trial was completed incorrectly in red or correctly in blue. And on the uh, y-axis is probability correct. And the red line shows um, 
shows a dynamic logistic regression algorithm estimating the trial by trial uh, percent correct. So we know a lot about how the animals are, are learning and, and uh, we've studied this a lot, but we realized we never asked the question, are these animals learning uh, using an error-based learning strategy? So that's exactly what um, Sheepy did. What, um, and it's very simple to do. You can do the same analysis you do in people. That is, you take uh, error trials, and you ask on the trial after an error trial, what was the behavioral performance? And you concatenate all those, and you compare that to the behavioral performance after a correct trial. And all of this analysis was done uh, basically in the first half of the um, uh, of the learning curve when uh, most of the uh, error trials are, are happening. And so she asked, based on this analysis, very standard analysis, um, um, is there error-based learning in the location scene task? And so when she concatenated all those percent corrects after a, a, a correct performance, she got about 70%. Then she did it for the errors. And she found significantly improved performance. So animals are performing better right after an error compared to right after a correct, which led us to conclude that we actually have a wonderful example of error-based learning. And not only that, we have neural activity in both the hippocampus and the entorhinal cortex, which allows us to address these major predictions in a physiological um, preparation. So the first... Um, Question, do we see uh, uh, error detection in the entorhinal cortex? And actually, we had evidence for how to look at this from previous uh, um, studies in the lab. And that was on a separate, uh, a different association learning task, an object place association learning task, where they have to learn object place combinations. And here, we started looking at what's happening in the reward and ITI period of the task. Um, to see whether these cells actually would, would uh, um, signal, uh, uh, told us something about the outcome, whether the trial was completed correctly or incorrectly. And we were stunned to find that in this study focused on the hippocampus, 50% of all the recorded hippocampal cells signaled trial outcome, that is, whether the trial was correct or wrong. And we found two flavors of these trial outcome cells. This is all published, uh, a study by Sylvia Wirth. Half the cells increase their activity in that intertrial interval um, following a correct trial relative to error trials. That's the one on the left. And on the right, you see cells that signal error, error detection. They increase their activity on error trials relative to correct trials. But this was a different task. We had never asked whether there was this kind of outcome signal in the location seen task. And now we had a framework from the model predictions. So that's exactly what Sheepy did. And she started with the entorhinal cortex, because that's where you should see strong uh, error um, signals. And what she found is 45% of all the recorded cells in the entorhinal cortex uh, signaled outcome. Of those, the majority of them, 67%, signaled errors. Increase in activity on errors relative to correct. Again, this is in the intertrial interval, after the animal knows whether it got it correct or wrong. And the other, uh, the remaining 22% uh, um, signaled correct trials. In the hippocampus, we also found error detection and correct detection, but you can see the differential responses are much uh, weaker, and there are many fewer cells in the hippocampus in this task that are signaling outcome. So um, let me just jump to here and say, for the first prediction, is there evidence in a task where monkeys are using error-based learning that the entorhinal cortex detects errors? Absolutely, very strong error detection. Let's move on to the second prediction. That's not, uh, uh, that's not just for error detection, but what about synaptic modification? What about learning signals that this model says should be happening in the hippocampus? So again, we'll go back to the learning curve. And um, I showed you behavioral evidence that after an error trial, those red dots, uh, the animal is uh, um, performing significantly better right after an error relative to right after a correct trial. And we asked whether that also corresponded to a change, a shift in the response properties of hippocampal or enteronal neurons. What is a learning signal that we might want to look at? We wanted to look at the selectivity of these neurons. That is, the animals have to discriminate between all the different uh, scenes that they're learning. I, I don't think I said this. Animals are learning multiple scenes concurrently. So one way that, that uh, the hippocampus could signal a, a shift that would help them perform the task is if these neurons became more sensitive to the differential uh, um, 
they fired more differentially through the different scenes being shown. So we looked at a selectivity index following an error trial compared to following correct trials. Again, all early on in learning. So what I'm going to be showing you for the hippocampus is a, a plot comparing the selectivity index after errors compared to the selectivity index after correct. And what we see focus here, this is, hap this is happening during the scene period, is a shift. After error trials, the selectivity index shown right here is significantly higher in these hippocampal cells compared to right after a correct trial. This is the significance right here. There, it's, not, it's only significant during the scene period, not during the delay period. So we have evidence of early hippocampal representation, uh, plasticity, um, during this error-based learning. Does it happen in the entorhinal cortex? No, we found no evidence of changes in selectivity in the entorhinal cortex using the same exact measure. So now we have evidence for early learning, early changes in the hippocampus in this error-based learning task. Then we wanted to ask, how selective is this? And we realized we had another task that, that had many of the same components that we had never asked, is this task being used, uh, being learned in an error-based learning way? So GP did the same analysis on the object place association task. And before I tell you what the, what the answer was, I have to say that this task was significantly more difficult for the animals to learn. It took them significantly longer. They made significantly more errors. But Theoretically, it was, it was still associative learning task. And when she did the behavioral analysis, what she showed is that this task was not an error-based learning task. It was a correct-based learning task. They learned more after a correct trial in this task than after an error trial. So now we can turn to what is the prediction for any neural activity? And here's what we wanted to find. Um, we, uh, because this is a correct based learning task, we did not want to see any um, uh, um, increase in selectivity after an error trial on this task. We might expect a, a, an increase in selectivity after a correct trial, but not after an error trial. And what we ended up finding when she did this next analysis, we kind of took bets on what we would find, was no change in the selectivity index in this task in the hippocampus after either correct or error. So there is specificity in, in the sense that for our error learning task, we, we, only for the error learning task do we see increases in selectivity after error trials, but not for uh, um, a correct based learning task. So we can answer the second of these two, uh, three predictions. Uh, the prediction was, E, enteronal induces synaptic modification. Of course, we didn't look at that directly, but we looked at the synaptic modification in the hippocampus, and the answer is yes, we found evidence in an, um, an error-based learning task, and we found specificity for that er error-based learning task. And finally, the third prediction. Can we find evidence that um, the long-term memory signal uh, might be conveyed by the enteronal cortex. And here we had a lot of experience looking at long-term memory signals in these kinds of tasks. That was basically what, what my lab has been doing for the last uh, 18 years. And so uh, what did we look for? So this is, this is uh, that same learning curve for the location scene task. And I can show you one of our classic findings, that in an individual hippocampal cell during this part uh, during this part of the learning curve, clearly the animal lear has learned nothing here. And if we superimpose neural activity in the hippocampus um, relative to baseline, which is the white uh, straight line, you see that there's no change in neural activity during these trials where behaviorally shows that the animal is not learning anything. But clearly, there's a huge behavioral change at this point of the trial. And we can see that, um, oops, that there's uh, huge change in neural activity uh, 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 in parallel with learning. We call these cells changing cells, and um, we know that this represents a shifting of selectivity. Uh, these neurons at the end of the trial here, um, uh, when clear learning has been shown, are much more highly selective uh, relative to the beginning of learning. So are there changing cells in this new population of cells that we recorded on the same task, just a, a, a kind of internal check? And the answer was yes. Um, in the population of hippocampal cells, including new hippocampal cells that GP had recorded, we found almost identical proportions of changing cells in the enteronal cortex that we hadn't looked at before, much smaller, 
high, uh, just, uh, just above chance significance of, of changing cells. They were there, but clearly more changing cells in the hippocampus. But uh, that wasn't the final answer for the enteronal cortex. We had another clue for how enteronal cells might be signaling long-term memory. Again, at the end of the trial, when learning is, is really high, what do enteronal cells signal? And this clue comes from going back to this object place association task. I told you that there's lots of uh, outcome cells that are signaling uh, correct or error cells, uh, error uh, uh, outcomes. And uh, what we asked is, this is a differentiation during the intertrial interval period, and we asked, well, what happens on the next trial for these error up cells, for example? Do they become more selective um, on the following trial during the, during the task period itself? And uh, again, this is um, published data. What we found for this task, remember it's a correct based learning task, we found that it's the correct up cells during the task itself that change their selectivity with learning. Another learning effect here, the error up cells don't, control cells don't, and if you don't get learning during the session, you get no change in selectivity. But that was the object place task. Let's go back to our location scene association task. And what we find is in the enteronal cortex, it is the error up cells that are changing their selectivity so that they are more selective at the end of the learning session than at the beginning of the learning session. So another kind of uh, long-term memory signal. So, uh, and, and we, of course, looked at the hippocampus as well, and, and hippocampal uh, cells. Remember, they didn't have a lot of outcome uh, signals to begin with. They didn't change uh, with learning. So now we can uh, address the third prediction. Does hippocampus entrain long-term memory signals in the enteronal cortex? Well, what we found was two different long-term memory signals, one in the hippocampus, those changing cells, and one in the enteronal cortex, those changing error up cells. So, I find these, these, um, uh, these findings exciting for a number of different ways, uh, reasons. One is error-based learning is, I think it really helps to bring the medial temporal lobe, both the enteronal cortex and the hippocampus, into the error-based learning field, in particular, the important role of the enteronal cortex in error detection, which uh, kind of the main players these days are uh, stay up in the prefrontal cortex, medial prefrontal cortex, and anterior cingulate cortex. I think that this is uh, a really exciting time to be looking at it because um, uh, error-based learning is uh, one category of learning from feedback, and there's a lot of exciting work being done by people like Daphna Shohami and Mike Shadlin um, talking about interesting and important interactions between um, the prefrontal cortex and, and parietal cortex and the hippocampus in um, a, a, a kind of learning from feedback, which uh, other people have called decision making. The other thing that you might think about in, in this very strong error detection in the enteronal cortex is reinforcement learning that is based in the striatum, of course. And ironically, uh, this, uh, this whole set of data that I just described for you from um, Shipi Ku was a side analysis project um, from her major project, which has been to record uh, individually and simultaneously in the caudate nucleus, shown right here in the human brain, uh, and the hippocampus um, to look for reinforcement learning uh, signals in the medial temporal lobe. And um, in fact, she, I, I'm not going to talk about that, but she has exciting new data that there are many more reinforcement learning uh, signals in the hippocampus than previously uh, indicated, including those that occur earlier in time than those in the striatum, at least in our hands. So I think this really helps to bring, um, you know, I was so excited to see all of the exciting um, uh, findings on imagination in the hippocampus uh, that Neil Burgess talked about, about the beautiful auditory uh, um, um, uh, 1D environment uh, responses in the hippocampus that David talked about, and of course the time cells that Howard talked about, and, and um, the um, uh, 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 motivation signals that, that Matthew talked about. And uh, I think it's a really exciting time for the hippocampus uh, uh, expanding out uh, beyond to these really, really interesting things, expanding out to cognition, and we can look back to uh, Jim's beautiful studies to, um, to see uh, some, some really uh, um, uh, smart early observations of that. So thank you very much for your attention.